Hey, this is Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com, and today I'm going to be going through the diamond formation and a perimeter run that we like to use out of the diamond formation and then some play action passes that we like to run out of the diamond formation. First of all, with our diamond formation, it's, a, it's symmetrical for us, which means it's balanced to both sides. Any concept that I would like to run can be run to the right side and also be run to the left side. We don't need to use any motions. We don't need to use any shifts. We don't need to trade anybody. We can run any of our concepts right or left at any time. For us, at my high school, what we like to do, okay, in this formation, we like to use the Z on the right. We like to use the X on the left. We play with a strong side line and a weak side line, and we send them to the call so we always have a strong tackle and a strong guard who always go to the call side. Now in this formation for us, it's part of an up-tempo package that we use. So in this formation, the strong tackle and the strong guard will always be on the right. The weak guard and the weak tackle will always be on the left. We flip-flop sides so that when we have some of our better offensive linemen, we don't leave them on one side so then we're stuck running plays into the boundary if the ball happens to be on that hash mark. So we flip sides with our offensive personnel up front. In the backfield, this is my Y on the right. This is my H back on the left. This is my tail back in the pistol formation. All right, he'll have his toes at about seven yards. This is my quarterback in the shotgun with his toes at about four yards. All right, so we're in the pistol formation. We're not at traditional pistol depth with the quarterback. We're still closer to normal shotgun depth with the quarterback but the tailback will be in a pistol position so that the tailback can be able to go to the right, to the left, downhill at any time with no shifts, no motions. All right, this can be in our personnel grouping in this formation. This is usually wide outs or running backs, tailbacks, speed players because we're trying to do things to the perimeter. And then we also have some option concepts where they become pitch players in the option phase. They're kids that have to be able to block because they will be asked to block on the perimeter. But at the same time, it's a speed package for us. It's a lighter package. It's not a heavy package. We have another three-back formation that's heavy where we run blasts and downhill runs. This is a little bit more option orientated and a little bit more perimeter orientated. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through our perimeter run to the right, which is a inverted veer concept. By inverted veer, I mean we will run outside zone with the tailback. We will read the front side C gap player. Our offensive line will be blocking a veer play. And what makes it inverted is now that the running back, if he gets the ball, is the outside part of the veer. And the quarterback, if he gets a pull read, is the inside part of the veer. Traditional football would have a back on the inside part of the veer and the quarterback attacking the perimeter on the outside part if he kept it. Okay, so let's go through the inverted veer first to the right. Okay, again, you can run any of these plays either way. I'm going to draw up the inverted veer to the right first. Okay, and then if we get time at the end, we'll flip it to the left. All right, we start off with traditional veer blocking rules up front. What that means is we're going to be play side inside gap for all of our offensive linemen. So our tackle is going to be play side B gap. Okay? Our guard is going to take play side A gap. Now we take care of those gaps up front to make sure that we take care of run through blitzes and stunts. If we don't get any stunts up front, we're going to look for double teams. So right now with the front side three technique, this would become a double to the play side inside linebacker. So it's play side B gap with the tackle, play side A gap with the tackle. If there's a three technique with no movement, we're going to double that up to the inside linebacker. This way now, if we get any stunts or movement, or if it's an odd package or an odd front, our kids don't have to ask who to block. It's a play side gap. Play side B gap, play side A gap. Three technique, double it up to Mike or play side inside linebacker. Center has most dangerous A gap player. In this front with the one backside, the center is going to step backside to the one technique. Okay? On the back side, guard and tackle on the back side away have on-out rules. Okay? They have on-out rules unless the center calls for a double team with the guard. If the center makes an ace rex or an ace leo call with the guard, he's going to double. So right now we're going to get a double on the nose and we're going to work that double back to the will. 
So if you got a standard eight man even front, there'd be a double on the three, there'd be a double on the one, all right? We'd work that double the play side inside backer. Center always works the backside inside backer. And now this backside weak tackle for us has to be on out on the five technique. Now the biggest key with the on out block on the backside tackle on a five technique is make sure he cannot cross your face. We don't need this to be a tremendous drive block. We don't need this to be a pancake down the field. We need a position block. So I usually tell this kid to make sure he takes a power step, inside step first, up so that end can't get his helmet across the face of the tackle. So it's pretty traditional standard veer rules up front, all right, which means the quarterback is now going to have the front side C gap defensive end as his read. We're going to take the front side half back, Y back right here. And we're going to arc release him outside the read to the first thing that shows inside out. The reason we do that is if anybody wants to squeeze and scrape, if anybody wants to gap exchange, usually you won't get it to the three and the five. You'll get it to the open big gap side. Any type of gap exchange with a linebacker that wants to run, we're going to seal that linebacker right now. We're going to take the tail back and we're going to get him out on whatever the force player may be to the outside. All right, if it's an eight-man front, outside linebacker safety, that's fine. If it's seven-man front, too high concept, all right, and it's going to be a safety coming down, we'll get him up on that safety. We can get that force player blocked either way. The Z is going to have stalk, play side rules. The X is going to have deep man, middle of the field. We're going to work him across deep man, middle of the field. We're going to take the H back, and we're going to run outside zone, stretching all the way across. He must get at least four yards outside the tackle before he even thinks about turning the ball up the field. And the reason for that is we are reading this end and he's unblocked. If, this, if the H-back takes the football and turns up the field, it's going to let the end slow play both of them. If the H-back gets the ball, that means the end squeeze, so we want him wide circling the wagons, all right, getting the perimeter of the defense so that we can get the ball to the outside. All right. If the quarterback gets a pull read, in other words, this end is either up the field or this end is wide, and the quarterback gets a pull read, the quarterback will run the inside portion of the veer play. All right, and that's what makes it an inverted veer concept. It is outside run here with inside run from the quarterback. Instead of your traditional veer play, quarterback uh, tailback inside, quarterback pull to the perimeter. So that's what makes it an inverted veer play. The good thing is this play could be flipped around and run to the other side at any time. All you have to do is employ your same beer rules up front. Okay, so if we had to turn this around now and run it the other way, at any time we could just, because the formation is symmetrical, at any time we could go ahead and say we're going to run the inverted beer play to the left. If the front were the same, all things considered, if we had the same eight-man front with the same shades, okay, it would be front side now, left side, front side gap, down inside gap, B gap, nothing there, he's going to climb the linebacker, front side guard, play side A gap, center looks for most dangerous A gap to back side inside linebacker, so now with the one here, he's going to be front side with the one. Working back to the mic. Backside guard and tackle are on out. They're both covered, so it's going to be base to three, base to five. Again, on the backside, the most important part, all right, I want my kids to power step, position step inside and up first on the on out block because I don't want those guys spiking across their face. I do not need a ton of movement on the backside. I need a positional block, all right, not a drive block on the backside, so I'm not worried about getting a ton of movement. I need to make sure this three and five can't cross their face. All right, so right now at this time, all right, we could run this play at any time and go to the left. It would be H back, arc, and seal inside backer, tail back, hustling to the perimeter, Y back right now, all the way across for outside zone. Make sure you don't turn up until four yards outside the offensive tackle. Quarterback reading the defensive end, C gap player on the front side. Now the X would have stalk rules, the Z would have deep man, middle of the field rules on the backside. So now you've got inverted veer to the right, 
inverted veer to the left. It shouldn't matter what the formation is, okay, or what the front is. For us, it's the same formation. The play should be able to run both ways. Symmetrical formation, balanced formation gives us the ability to do what we want to either side. Okay, coming off this same action now, what I'm going to do is just draw up our front side play action combination that we like to run, which gives us a chance to stretch the defense, throw the ball over the top, all right, and it's a play to protect your play. All right, I believe for me offensively, I always want plays that are going to protect my plays. So if I'm going to be an outside jet sweep or an outside zone type philosophy, running the football, I want to have something that marries up with that to make sure that I keep the defense honest and I make sure that I keep the defense guessing off of the plays I'm running. So if we had a defense that wanted to drop the safeties down real aggressively in the quarters concept or a robber team, all right, or if we saw an eight-man front, we want to be able to take advantage of those things, okay? So if we were to look at, all right, same standard eight-man front, all right, now eventually you're going to see some 3-4 packages, you're going to see some 3-3 stack. you got to get your generic rules in first, you got to get them written down so your kids can understand those rules and how to play fast, and then you work in all the nuances of each front after that. But basically it's a gap sound procedure, so you really don't have to worry about the nuances of the stunts and the blitzes because if everyone handles their gap, you should be okay. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to use a seven-man full slide protection. So we're running a play action pass to the right off the outside zone fake right, so we're going to full slide the line to the left. All right, so we're going to slide all of our linemen one gap to their left. Okay, now we're going to take the tailback and we're going to insert him in the C gap to the right. Got to keep his helmet on the inside, insert tight to the tackle because the offensive tackle is stepping down. Okay, we're going to take the backside H is going to be the play action fake across, and then he will be the D gap player. All right, so your tailback is going to be a C gap player, and your H back off the fake is going to be a D gap player. It's going to be a seven man protection. Seven man protection. Full slide should take care of stunts, blitzes. Unless they bring eight, they shouldn't be able to bring an extra one. All right, so we should have everything covered. On the front side, we're going to run post by the Z. We're going to take the Y back out here and run them on the wheel. We're going to take the X on the back side and we're going to run a progressive drag across the field at about 8 to 10. What this now allows us to do off the play action fake, it's going to be a drop back pass off the play action fake. Okay, what it allows us to do now is take advantage. If we get a one high structure, we can get the tailback on this outside linebacker, hopefully in a man concept, depending on how hard they want to squeeze the post with the corner. Okay. If they're trying to use this free safety as an alley guy and run him down on quarterback runs or jet sweeps, we can get the post over the top. All right. If we saw some type of too high, maybe a 3-4 structure, and maybe they were a quarters team, so maybe we saw some type of 3-4 three, three, deal here, or maybe they like to move the front. All right. Maybe they like to move the front one way or the other, and then they want to roll behind or roll somewhere. All right. So if you had a structure that looked like that, and let's say they wanted to bring the front one way and bring the Sam with it, all right, and maybe drop the strong safety down and spin. If it spins to one high, we're either going to get the tailback on the wheel on the outside linebacker, okay, or we get the post over the top depending on the spin of the free safety, okay, or we can go over the top with the drag to the backside. Now, normally you'd like to throw away from the spin of the free safety. Okay, but for us, it's a front side play action theory. We're not throwing it based on the spin of the safety. We're throwing it off of our run action to protect our run play. So now we've got to throw it into the coverage that we get. If you're playing a quarters team or a team that likes to get the safeties down on a run, and maybe they're not moving the front as much, all right, maybe you're getting a two-gap team and this guy's going to be a quarters player here, all right, now when you run the post, what's going to happen is you're going to get a double on the post, so you're going to get the corner, Squeezing the post with the safety undercutting the post because two went to the flat. When two goes to the flat and goes to the wheel, hopefully we can get two on a Sam linebacker. Okay? So that's how we can protect our front side plays, our front side outside zone with the front side play action pass. 
I have diagrams in, in the blog. I have diagrams of our play sheets, and I have a couple clips from our season this year where we ran the outside zone read inverted veer, and we ran the play action passes. I hope this I hope this helps you guys out. I hope you can use some of these concepts. And again, these blogs will be coming one or two a week. Look forward to you guys tuning in and checking out some of the things we do in the future. Thanks.